We had another episode lined up, however, with the extremely sad news of the passing of Paul Smart, one of my heroes. We thought we'd do this episode and dedicate it to him and his memory, and at the same time, review and have a look at the bike that got his name to celebrate his achievement back in 1972. Now Paul Smart was a British born motorcycle racer and he raced in the 60s and 70s and that was a very interesting era because it was the era when they changed from the four stroke to the two strokes and when the dominance from British motorcycles to Japanese motorcycles and also the transition of the cut road tires to the slicks. So he raced in a very interesting era and you had to constantly adapt your riding style and Paul was actually a factory racer for factories such as Ducati, Norton, um, Kawasaki as well as Suzuki. And he obviously developed a style of his own hanging off the bike uh, to the point that some people even commented that only his toenails were hanging onto the bike as he was cornering. And that was to try and get those uh, Japanese bikes to go around corners. Because as the British uh, dominance declined for motorcycles, the Japanese produced the all-conquering, most powerful two-stroke motors. However, they were evil handling bikes. And uh, Paul raced circuit racing as well as uh, street circuit racing and uh, most notably the Isle of Man where he raced a couple of times, also podiumed. So very, very competent racer and he did that back then on the British bikes. So in the early 70s, since 1972, he was actually racing for the factory team Kawasaki in America when his wife Maggie Smart, she's actually the sister of Barry Sheen, so the originally Maggie Sheen, now Mary, Maggie Smart, got the phone call from Ducati and she's the one who actually accepted the deal for Paul to go overseas and race the Imola 200 mile race in Italy. Now, Imola 200 mile was the equivalent, the European equivalent of the American Daytona 200, a very important, very prestigious race. It was also the very, very first race where Ducati uh, entered and ended up winning with Paul Smart on a twin cylinder, 90 degree air-cooled twin cylinder with desmodromic valves, as we have the Ducatis of today. So it is the very first win of that iconic motor of Ducatis today, the 90 degree air-cooled twin desmodromic valves. And this is where the legacy and the legend started. One of, most probably, uh, Paul Smart had many wins in his career, but most probably the most iconic win of his career. Now, I was fortunate enough to meet Paul Smart on a couple of occasions, most notably at uh, World Ducati Week in Italy. And he was a fantastic, humble, funny guy, always made time for fans, never rushed, had awesome stories to tell, and had a lot of time. Signed autographs, never rushed. So it just, uh, it was even better once I met the guy and got to chat to him and his sense of humor. And that's why it, it just was one of those things I had to have the Paul Smart. Now going back a little bit where the story started, in 1972, the, the bike was a 750cc, it was in silver, very much like this, and he was invited to race the second bike. The other bike was raced by the factory rider called Spagiari, and on that day in 1972, they came in first and second. Paul Smart winning that race, Spagiari coming in second. And to celebrate that event, Ducati produced what we can call a homologation bike, the 750 SS, SS for super sport. And uh, it was in that glitter silver with a little bubble bikini fairing on top. And it had this sort of greenish bluish frame and it got the nickname of the 750 green frame. Now there was 401 of those produced and it is actually one of the most valuable Ducatis of today. And then back in 2000, early 2000s, Ducati started producing a classic range. And in 2006, they launched this particular bike, the Paul Smart, in dedication of his great achievement and that great win of the day. There was only 2,000 produced, and again, it was produced very reminiscent of the 750 SS street bike with a little bubble bikini fairing and that 
very iconic green frame also the glitter silver paint you will see that it got ducati font uh, very much retro and of the day it's a it's a different font they use today and then the factory actually produced a, a limited or only on order a full fairing with these iconic number 16 that he raced with under the clear coat which seamlessly fitted onto that little bubble fairing on top and this particular bike in front of me has this option of the full fairing you had to put a different exhaust because the original exhaust would have burned through the side of the fairings so we have the OEM Terminoni on this bike with the power commander other than that the bike is stock standard to be honest I had the my first Paul Smart and that had the little bikini fairing we put the Zard pipe on and had some great times around uh, Kyle Army racetrack thrashing it around in the bots battle of the twins but then the time came and I actually sold her to upgrade and get a Ducati 1098R however very quickly I got seller's remorse and looked around and that's when I found this just taken out of a crate it's never been PDI'd it's never run never turned a wheel so it is stock standard besides the options of the full fairing and that original factory parts and never turned a wheel never turned a wheel in anger never been down the road brand new as she is next thing I did I took a couple of parts to World Ducati Week being the seat cover the rear view mirrors and the clutch cover and met up with Paul Smart again and he was so kind and signed these parts for me I have a couple of photos of that and it was just great days great time spending with him hearing his stories so before I took these parts overseas to Italy to meet up with Paul I actually took this chrome clutch cover and put the layout of the Imola track of the day with pit lane and I slightly sandblasted into it uh, in honor of the 200 mile of Imola and below it champion number 16 Paul Smart and the date of the event which was 23 April 1972 and as it is there that's where how I took it overseas and got Paul to sign it took some great photos and heard all these great stories of that event and how he achieved that great win now this is obviously one of my most prized possessions and uh, I would be extremely reluctant to part with her another thing that uh, is slightly different on this bike is I obviously went back to the Bologna Museum of Ducati and there I took high-res photos of Paul's bike it was actually there was a separate room there has been some changes over the years but back then the Mike Hellwood and Paul Smart's bike the two most iconic wins in Ducati's history uh, Mike Hellwood the 1978 uh, Isle of Man win uh, on the Ducati 900 and the 1972 Paul Smart win they had their own little room and on, on display so what I did I took really close-up pictures of the the let's call it sponsors and, and decals on the bike and try to replicate it because the 2006 Paul Smart limited to 2000 units was actually a inspiration from the 1974 750 SS green frame as well as the win of Paul Smart in 1972 however my bike I try to take it to the next level and make it a tribute bike to the 72 Imola win. So what I added besides this to make it look like his race bike, I photographed the uh, Renault chain decal at the back, had it cleaned up, had a decal printed for it uh, to match his bike. Also, what's very iconic, back in the day, when they sprayed their fiberglass tanks, they left a stripe out which wasn't sprayed over and that was actually to see the fuel level because through the fiberglass you could see the level of the fuel and the guys knew how much fuel was left so I took a photo of that threw a laser over it and tried to replicate and emulate that uh, fiberglass looking line through there and the other thing was on his bike he had that it seemed like hand painted red Ducati name on the fairing and when you look closely you can actually see the glitter come through so what I had done I had the red printed on a translucent violin vinyl then had it cut to this font of the day and just to finish it off so mine is actually more of a tribute bike 
besides being an inspiration. Now let's have a look at the basic specs of the 2006 1000cc limited edition Paul Smart Classic. So what makes this Paul Smart slightly different to the classic range that Ducati produced in the early 2000s would be obviously starting with the front and rear suspension being Olin's. It's also the monoposto, the single seater, uh, produced only as a single seater in the Paul Smart guys. You have your little plaque up here that's laser Ducati Paul Smart limited edition. It doesn't give you a number of bike, you'd pick that up on the VIN number. And other than that, this bike has very iconic and harking back to the day, the spoked wheels front and back. However, with a modern spin, shod with a 120 front and a 180 rear, and even Pirelli came on board. They produced a modern compound of today tire. However, with the tread pattern of the 70s being a spoked rim, it is a tubed tire. As mentioned, front and back Olins, then your brake system front dual disc with four piston calipers Brembo's either side, a two piston Brembo brake at the back. Your frame being the iconic green, a once off color only for the Paul Smart, not on any of the other bike. The bodywork is the iconic glitter silver as Paul raced it. The motor is the very iconic Ducati 90 degree L twin motor. Uh, exact size is a 992cc uh, with the Desmodromic valve system producing 90 horsepower at 8000 rpm and 91 newton meter at 6000 rpm. Goes through the dry clutch, six speed gearbox, final drive, chain this side. And as you can see, the trellis tubular frame carried right down to the rear swing arm, very iconic of that old bike really classic bike, retro clocks, white dials with black numbers, analog and then a small LCD display to put the modern retro spin together, uh, steering damper, non-adjustable and just as mentioned before the two options being the Terminoni factory fitted uh, with power commander exhaust and the Corsa fairings. So all round just a classic bike, dry weight being 179 kilograms. The top speed on this bike would be around about 210 kilometers per hour, but we're not going to do that as for us, it's a pure showpiece. Again, I would like to dedicate this episode to Paul Smart, the man, the man I met, I had the privilege of spending a few hours with. To me, he was just a funny guy, a humble man, awesome stories I could listen hours to and the time he took out for his fans just a fantastic guy he might be gone but never forgotten please remember to click like and subscribe to see more